Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. This is the Wharton iGel GE Water Innovation Technology Edition of Green is Good here in beautiful downtown San Francisco. And we're so honored to have with us today Robin Gilthorpe. He's the CEO of WaterSmart Software. And you can find his great company at www.watersmart.com. Dot com. Welcome to Green is Good, Robin. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. And you know, I had the pleasure and the opportunity of uh, moderating a panel that you were on earlier today. So I get a little bit of a head start on our audience, but I want to catch our audience up. And I want you to share with our audience first, Robin, before we get talking about WaterSmart and before we get talking about this conference, I want you to share the Robin Gilthorpe story on how you even evolved to this point in your life where you're the CEO of this very important, innovative uh, water technology company. Yeah, so by background, um, as you can hear, I'm not here from the Bay Area, uh, grew, <laughs> grew up in England. Um, I'm a recovering economist, right? So that's to say, you know, I, I studied both quantitative and behavioral economics. Right. And then I took that experience and really got serious about the business of analytics, of data analytics. And I applied that to lots of different industries, from financial services to national security to retail and so on. But, you know, one thing kept kind of drawing me back. And uh, perhaps it was an experience um, as an undergrad student uh, working in the labs at Anglian Water, where we were testing water quality. And one of the things people often don't know about the UK is that uh, actually there's less water per capita in the UK than there is in Morocco. So, you know, it's surprising, right? And, no idea. And so, as we sit here in California, and I've been living here for several years now, um, as we sit here in California, it's very easy to think of our current water problems as a drought problem. Mm. But really, it's a growth and a population problem. Explain what you mean by that. Well, b by that, what I really mean is that, you know, it's a supply and a demand issue. Ah, okay, okay, gotcha. When was your company born and where was your epiphany to go from being an economist to someone who was going to step off the cliff? Because that's what being a real entrepreneur is. And, uh, and, and, and go take an idea, a germ of an idea, a, a, a vision that you have and raise money and go take a shot. Sure. So, I mean, for the foundation of the company, I'm incredibly grateful to my partner, um, Peter Yalis. So Peter had spent... 20 years as a water guy. He started out um, in not-for-profits, he worked for GE, he worked on the policy side and so on. So Peter's kind of the water guy and I was the data guy. So was Peter back with you in England or here in the States? He's, he's here in the States. And how did you meet Peter along the way in the journey? It's through, um, you know, here, big investment community, Sand Hill Road. Got it. And that whole thing. Got it. So you guys met and over coffee, dinner, over what? Did you decide that this would maybe a perfect match of water and data? Yeah, so I, um, you know, Peter actually got this started and um, you know, he did some very good initial work and did the incredibly hard thing of getting that first couple of customers. Mm. But what rapidly became obvious was that this was a much bigger market. Mm. And you know, I've spent my career looking at these analytics businesses and going, you know, not so much the zero to one, but the one to a hundred mm. kind of experience. And so what we saw was this opportunity really to go and target the four billion people in the world who are connected to city water. Wow. So when was the company actually officially born? And where, where, did, where was it born? And how did you find the first dollars when you took an idea, went out to raise some money? And how did you get it? Um, you know, from how are you building it from one to a hundred now? Yeah. So, um, so the company, the idea was born, you know, on Peter's kitchen table in uh, uh, late 2009. Okay. There was a there was a bunch of sort of you know bootstrapping and doing in the evenings and all the rest of it for about a couple of years. Right. Um, and you know the the journey was pretty interesting. You know, we got um, w the by the years we got one utility then five then 12 last year 36 today we're 
you know, in the high 40s, hopefully hitting 50 utilities. Does the success of you landing utilities beget success as each success story ratchets up with the previous customers that you land? Every year when you try to track your growth kegger, do you feel, I mean, what is your growth uh, trajectory right now for the next two or three years? Yeah, that's, um, so there's a, particularly in cloud type businesses, there's kind of a playbook for this, right? It's um, if you talk to a bunch of the venture guys who've seen this a thousand times, they'll tell you what you need to do is T2, D3. So triple twice, double three times. That's kind of your path to a hundred million run rate. And so interestingly, last year we tripled the business, actually the year before we tripled the business. This year we'll probably more or less triple the business. Um, And then, you know, the year after and the year after we'll certainly be in that doubling rate. So we feel like we're on the flight path that we need to be. The playbook. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Good. So share a little bit about what your company does, though, the uniqueness of what you're doing with um, water, uh, data, and the transparency you're able to give on the demand side that didn't exist before. You know, at a very simple level, what we do is we help utilities and consumers to save water, Mm. save money, Mm. and avoid energy use. And so we're doing this with data, and we're really focused, you know, so not on the physical world, but on the digital world. And we're focused not on the supply side, but on the demand side. And so what we do is we take data from the utilities that they need in any way to be able to give you a bill. We mix their data with our data. And so we have data like, you know, what does your house look like? How big is it? How big is your lot? What's the climate and weather? Um, How many people are in the house? When was the house first built? And so on. So we have a whole series of parameters. We mix all that stuff together. We're looking at this constantly and we're looking for patterns. And we run through about a half a billion data points each and every hour. Um, And we're looking for anomalies. And so what we can do is we can give information to the utility about who's using how much water, when, where, why, and how. That's very useful for them at a macro level, all the way down to you as an individual. We then also forge a channel for the utility to talk to you, because typically utilities don't talk to their consumers. So we change that dynamic and they can give you very precise personal information saying you john use exactly this many gallons per day and this is where it's going and that in itself is actually helpful and then we can actually give you a fair comparison and say hey if you're using 100 gallons a day is that a lot or a little let's compare you with somebody whose house looks just like yours They've also got four people in the house. They're also living in a 2,700 square foot home on 11,000 square foot lot and in this particular climate. Because, you know, even in the Bay Area, you look at somewhere like Berkeley and somewhere like Orinda, the linear distance is very small, but it's a different climate. So if you live in Orinda, comparing you with someone in Berkeley isn't fair. So we give people a fair comparison. And then we say, hey, since you scored at the bottom of the class or wherever it may be, here are three or five things you can do that are specifically tailored to your experience. So every single consumer gets a different communication. And because we're doing this with digital techniques, we can do one by one communications at mass communications economics. So wait a second now, Robin, I want to, I want to make this as simple as possible. Is this basically what you're doing with software and with technology and data in the water sector, you're making, Everything measurable and therefore manageable. Yes, that's a, that's a great way of putting it. And actually, we're using a load of the techniques that conceptually people are familiar with from their everyday experiences on the Internet, right? right. I mean, the same way that Google can analyze what you're doing and serve you with an ad that's based on your exact profile, right. we do the same for water. That's brilliant. When you came up with this, was anybody already doing it? So at, at the time, um, people were starting to do this already in the energy sector. Right. Nobody was doing it. And frankly, even it's only now that people are starting to do it um, in the water sector. In the water sector, for me to get my reading or to have that information in the community I live in in California, do I have to get that 
through my municipality or do I sign up through watersmart.com uh, to get it directly from your company, which is then the big data holder of all this information. Yeah, so the, the way that we work currently, we work with and through the municipalities. So we view those utilities as our partners, gotcha. and our primary goal, frankly, is to make them look good and to help them run better. So you know, even if you're using our product, it will actually have not a WaterSmart brand on it, it will have your utilities brand on it. So you do the, is it, do you sometimes co-brand? Is it always private label? It's always private label. If you look at the bottom of the page, you can probably find a little copyright and water smart way at the bottom of the page. But, you know, we don't need to be taking the limelight. No kidding. That's fascinating. And for our, for our viewers and our listeners out there that want to learn more about Robin's amazing company, and he's the CEO, Robin Gilthorpe of WaterSmart Software, please go to www.watersmart.com. The future. Talk a little bit about, before we get to talking about this today's conference, talk a little bit about the future of WaterSmart. How big can this grow? Because we're talking about something, if you're comparing home versus home in a community and community versus community, now we start talking about city versus city, state versus state, country versus country. This sounds like a universally unlimited opportunity for your software and for your data analytics. I think that's a great point. You know, uh, firstly, it's a huge market. There are 4 billion people in the world who are connected to city water. Right? And every one of them is a potential user of this technology. And then I think the second thing that's very important is as we get bigger, we develop a whole series of network effects. Right? The more data we have, the more precise we can be. So the information actually gets better and more valuable. Um, <clears throat> the second point is that you know, we're also able to provide benchmarking. So utilities are interested in terms of how they grade, right? Am I improving more than the neighboring utility? How do I score in the US? How do I score in the world? So ultimately, we see an opportunity not just to let consumers see themselves against their fair comparators, but to see utilities against their fair comparators. And it's also, particularly in a crisis like we're facing here in California right now, incredibly valuable, you can imagine, for say the state of California, rather than doing what they do today, waiting a month to get the two month old data. You know, just yesterday or the day before, we had all the data for April. So this is a real time world. Real time, that's brilliant. So the opportunity is truly unlimited. You're located here, your company's located here in the Bay Area? We're right here in San Francisco, so it was a nice walk over here to Wharton. The, which is basically ground zero for innovation and, and technology. So here you are doing, you know, changing the world and making the world a better place right here out of Silicon Valley but and, and San Francisco. So we're here at Wharton today. Why Wharton, GE, why technology in California right now? Obviously, your solution is nothing short of brilliant. But why is it important for you to come and message not only what you're doing, but help frame up the issue and talk about how technology and innovation can help work our way through these issues. The reason to be here today was very much that we're not just building a business. We're trying to build a market and we're trying to encourage other people to participate. There are a couple of unique things about this situation. Number one, you know, when we sell to individual utilities, we learn from each of those experiences. And utilities don't actually compete with each other, right? They're geographical monopolies. Right. So unlike a lot of other markets, if I were working in financial services or retail, if I did something that was really cool for one company, right. they would definitely not want me to share that with another company. Actually, one nice thing about this industry is people want to share those best practices, and there's no conflict in doing that. The other thing is there's this ecosystem factor that Simply put, there needs to be more capital applied to solving these kinds of problems. And at the moment, there just hasn't been enough investment in this sector to really move the long-term picture. And I want to encourage people to be more aggressive about using big data on the demand side, on the supply side, and using it in tandem with all the physical science that we've been hearing about today. How big is your company in terms of employees right now? We are still relatively small. We're, you know, we're a couple of dozen employees. Wow. Um, but, uh, but already, 
serving millions of homes in almost 50 communities coast to coast. And venture-backed. Absolutely, yeah. Venture-backed by, among other people, uh, Steve Wesley, who was you know, uh, first marketing executive at eBay and famous early investor in Tesla. Um, he's very committed to you know, great returns, but great outcomes for the community and for the planet. Um, also, uh, you know, other great names, DFJ, Physic Ventures, and a series of large family offices who are very much committed to our mission. You know, um, Robin, I want to give you the final thoughts and words. Um, you know, we have a whole generation of young people uh, that want to be the next Robin Gilthrop, and that's a great thing. And they listen to the show. The show is broadcast around the world. Uh, they now also get to watch it on YouTube when we go to these kind of conferences and meet thought leaders and business leaders like you. Some food for thought as we wrap up for today. Where are we in this journey in terms of technology, water, uh, and the crises that exist in overcoming these crises with great and innovative and disruptive brands like yours? And what advice can you give to the young people behind you that don't want to just go and work at a law firm or at an engineering firm. They want to uh, you know, be an ecopreneur like you that changes the world for the better. So the, the first thing I'd say is that, unfortunately, we're going to see more of these crises. Um, by 2023, we're likely to see 40 of 50 states with a water crisis at some level. And that's not my data, that's from the GAO, from the US government. Okay. Um, so this is not going away. The solutions, I think, will have to come from that innovation center um, and from venture back firms. And I really wanna make sure that people are encouraged to do that. Um, and I think the, the other thing that's worth pointing out is that you know, when I look at our team, which comprises behavioral scientists, economists, data scientists, designers, and so on. Everybody is there, not just to make a paycheck, but to make a difference. Mm. And you know, the opportunity that is presented by working in the digital world means that there's a whole series of areas, whether it be water or other parts of our life, where we can have a really material impact on the physical world even though we're working with digital methods. And I encourage people to do that. And we are, of course, hiring. <laughs> you got that from Robin Gilthorpe. He is hiring here at WaterSmart. And to learn more about Robin's great company, please go to www.watersmart.com. Robin, I just want to thank you from everyone here at the conference and myself at Green is Good for coming here today and making the world a better place. You are truly living proof that green is good. Thank you so, so much. Thank Fantastic. you very much. Great Thank you very much.